Welcome back guys, this is what if Naruto was uh, neglected by his family and the prodigy part 1, hope you'll enjoy it, please stay care, stay safe and uh, let's get straight into it. The night that started it all. Today was October 10th, the day most had recognized as any other ordinary day just like any other as the citizens and shinobi of Konoha settled down and began to drift to sleep as the midnight slowly began to approach them. However none of the residents of Konoha were prepared for the surprise attack by none other than the nine-tailed demon fox. Roaring as loudly as it could it began to tear into the village as its shinobi began to rush towards the fox and protect their homes and families. As that happened the village civilians as well as the younger generation of leaf shinobi were taken underground, though the younger shinobis against their will since they wanted to protect their homes. We can help fight, don't make just sit stand here and watch, a 17-year-old raven-haired girl with red eyes declared as a man of similar features stood a little in front of her, just out of reach of the barrier they were being kept behind. This fight is for the older generation. If we fail then it will be up to you, the younger generation to carry on our wool of fire and protect the village. Kur and I, he said looking at the raven-haired girl, become a great kunoichi and makes me a proud father and a proud grandfather one day he said before he disappeared into a swirl of leaves, intent on joining the fight to protect the leaf from the rampaging biju. Kuranai shook a little angrily as her father left and let a stray tear go down her face before a hand placed itself on her shoulder. Looking over her shoulder she saw Asuma Serutobi, a 17-year-old recently promoted Jonin give her a look that said, believe in him and follow his words. Not liking it she nodded her head in agreement despite still not liking it. Beside her, her fellow graduation class members and current Anbu Kakashi Hitaki and his self-proclaimed eternal rival Might Guy stood there silently as they observed the beast attacking their home with emotionless looks on their face. Despite that she knew they along with everyone else all had the same feeling of wanting to do their duty and not feel so useless against the Kayubi. As they observed and watched, a small whimper came from behind them making them turn around and made their eyes soften. Standing behind them was little five-year-old Naruto Namikaze, still wearing his blue pajamas with little shurikens decorating around them and a little grey robe wrapped around him. He looked just like his father, the fourth Hokage with his tanned skin and blonde hair and even had a similar personality to him which made him quite quiet but smart for his age. His eyes though were violet just like his mother's Kashina Uzumaki and had bursts of her personality at times. He was born on October 3rd and had just celebrated his fifth birthday a week ago with his father and his heavily pregnant mother who was expecting twins. His parents adored him and spoiled him to a degree though they were happy that Naruto never got bratty. He was a very kind, fun-loving though quiet little boy who in return loved his parents very much, especially his mother Kashina. He was very excited when he found out he was going to be a big brother and had did his best to help his mother around the house and try to cause her as little trouble and stress as he could. Sometime he even talked to his little siblings in his mother's tummy which always made Minato and Kashina smile at him proudly. Where are Ka-chan and Tu-san? He asked as he watched the fox destroy his home shifting in his spot a little nervously. Kuranai went down to her knees and picked him up into her arms trying to soothe him. Your Ka-chan and Tu-san will be okay Naruto. Remember your Tu-san is the strongest in the village and your mother is no pushover either, Kakashi said trying to lift the boy's spirits. B but Ka-chan has my baby brother and sister in her tummy. What if she gets hurt? That won't happen Naru-chan. Your Tu-san won't let any harm come to them. You have my word on it, she said as Naruto nodded and watched as he nuzzled into the older girl's neck. The rest was silent as they continued to watch as the shinobi of the village tried to push the Kayubi away but were getting thrown away effortlessly by the fox. Just as it looked like the Nine Tails was going to storm forward a large elongated staff hit it square in the stomach and slowly started pushing the fox away and out of the village. When the fox looked to see where it came from, standing on top of one of the buildings was none other than Hiruzen Serutobi, the third Hokage. Gigi. Naruto said just managing to see his grandfather-like figure battle the Kayubi while the younger generation smiled at the arrival of the powerful leaf shinobi. As he watched the third Hokage battle the Kayubi with long-range support from some of the other leaf shinobi, Naruto felt two strong energy signatures appear nearby and land just beside the third Hokage. Naruto smiled though when he recognized the signatures. Pervy Sage and Ba-chan are here. He said as the Kuranai, Kakashi, Asuma and Guy looked at him in confusion not entirely sure what he was talking about. 
As soon as they did two large plumes of smoke appeared in front of the Kayubi revealing a large white slug with blue stripes going down its back and a large purple frog with a shield and sasamata in its hands. On top of their heads none other than Jiraiya and Tsunade, two of the leaf villages Sanin. When they saw Jiraiya and Tsunade begin battling the Kayubi, the four younger shinobi looked at Naruto in surprise. How did he know they were there? I did not even sense them, they all thought but left it alone for now and would get back to it later. Jiraiya kun, Tsunade chan, Serutobi greeted a little out of breath as the two Sani nodded towards him. Sensei, if the Kayubi is here I can only guess something went wrong with Kashina's while she was in labor. Jiraiya asked, that seems to be the case. Though I have not seen her or Minato yet, I don't know where they are but we have to keep the Kayubi away. No matter what, he said stealing his voice as they both nodded. However just as the fox was about to launch an attack towards them, Minato appeared above the Kayubi's head looking a little beaten up and then disappeared with the Kayubi in a yellow flash away from the village making everything suddenly go quiet. Where did they go? Tsunade asked as they began to scanning the areas before they saw a large explosion a few mile out from the village. There, Jiraiya said before the three cage level shinobi began running as fast as they could towards the site with the summons following after. The other shinobi watched as the fourth Hokage and Naruto's father vanished with the Kayubi making many cheer though only four and a little boy knew it was not over yet. Naruto closed his eyes and searched for his dad. Having never told anyone this, he had always been able to sense where people were. He recognized his parents' signatures like the back of his hand. After a minute of searching he found them outside the village but he sensed his mother was hurt. It made him want to go to her and stop the Kayubi from hurting her. He hopped out Kurinai's arms and started running forward but Kurinai and Kakashi caught him. Naruto you mustn't. Just because the Kayubi is not there does not mean it is still not dangerous. Kakashi urged but the little blonde struggled as Kurinai placed him gently against her chest despite his wriggling. But I have two. Ka-chan is hurt, I know it. She is with two San and the Kayubi. Now that made the others have their eyes widen. He can sense that far away? They thought since they knew the Hokage must have teleported the Kayubi a fair distance away from the village. The range that Naruto seemed to have of sensing people was vast vast. Definitely need to look into that on a later date, Asuma said to Kurinai who nodded since a sensing ability of that magnitude sounded like a real blessing. Have faith Naru-chan, they will be okay, Kurinai said as Naruto's violet eyes look out across the village. Battle site. Kashina breathed in heavily as multiple chakra chains were shot out of her back and keeping the Kayubi in its place while Gamabunta, the chief toad was on its back trying his best to keep it pinned down. Moments later Minato suddenly flashed in front of her. In his hands was their newborn daughter, one of the beautiful twins his wife had given birth to not long ago. Her body was in pain all over after the Kayubi was ripped out of her but she willed herself to stay awake. She could not let her family and the village down. I'm sorry Kashina, but this is the only way, he said solemnly. If we seal the beast back into you then you will die and I can't let that happen. I can't let the twins and Naruto live a life without their mother. Kashina did not like it but she knew it had to be done. A newborn baby was the best option to seal the beast away in. But to make her children carry such a burden made a dent in her heart. It was a burden she never wanted one of her children to have to hold. How are we going to seal it? Kashina asked as she tried to stand up but felt the Kayubi struggling against her chakra chains. Though she was a Fuinjutsu master, that were only a few methods of sealing that could contain the nine-tailed fox and knew there would be a struggle since the Kayubi no doubt did not want to go back to be sealed away again. I have a plan for that. I can sense Jiraiya Sensei, Tsunade and Serutobi are on their way here. When they get here we will perform the four-corner sealing method. Once we get it trapped, I will seal it away with the eight trigrams. The four corner sealing method might not work Minato, it was designed to hold the biju up to the six tails. The Kayubi might be too powerful for it, Kashina said concerned since they only had one shot at this. I know but with five cage level shinobi here and four to perform the ritual, it can be done. It will be close but it can be accomplished. Kashina bit her lip, it was not the best idea but it could work. The eight trigrams would definitely hold the Kayubi, she just hoped the four-corner barrier seal would be enough. Incoming, 
Gamabunta shouted as the Kayubi got one of its claws out of the chains and sent it towards them. I will not be sealed away again, he roared showing his target was the baby Mito. No. Both Minato and Kashina shouted as they jumped in the way to protect their daughter from harm. They waited for the strike to hit but suddenly felt a large shockwave hit them from behind. Looking around they saw Gamakan deflected the Kayubi claw with his shield. Minato, three voices called as Hiruzen, Tsunade and Jiraiya appeared beside them. While Gamabunta and Gamakan kept the Kayubi pinned down, Tsunade began to heal Kashina as Minato explained the plan to them all. The three newly arrived adults looked down at the baby girl in sadness knowing she rough patches she was bound to encounter in her life. They did not like it but they knew it had to be done. Does anyone know if Naru-chan is okay? Kashina asked thinking about her oldest and firstborn. She saw Hiruzen nod his head. Last I checked he was in the protective barrier being looked after by Kakashi, Asuma, Gai and Kuranai. He is safe and is unharmed. Kashina nodded and breathed a little easier knowing her Naruto was safe and had not been caught in the fox's rampage. As Tsunade healed Kashina's body enough for her to move and access her chakra, Hiruzen stood in front of the Kayubi with the intent of helping keep the Kayubi at bay while the other four took the four points around the Kayubi to begin the sealing. From Minato's spot he placed his hand on the ground and summoned a small altar and gently placed his new daughter on top of it. She was sound asleep which surprised him from all the noise but he guessed that was more a good thing. He began drawing on the necessary symbols in blood around the baby and onto the baby girl's stomach. After a moment the seal was ready. Everyone had time now, Minato declared as Kashina retracted her chains which released the nine-tailed fox and made it roar from its spot. Gamakan and Gamabunta did their best to keep it down as did Serutobi but the Nine Tails was the strongest of the tailed beasts for a reason and was very quickly getting out of their grasp. Minato nodded to everyone as he, Kashina, Jiraiya and Tsunade all prepared and channeled their chakra and made the necessary hand seals. Dog, Snake, Boar, Tiger, Four Corner Sealing Jutsu, the four all shouted as their blue chakra burst from all around them and began to create a large net. The net began to expand before it was big enough to cover the Kayubi. In each of their hands was Kanai that once the net was securely placed around the Kayubi, they would drive the Kanai into the ground and hold the Kayubi in the ceiling barrier. Gamakan, Gamabunta and Serutobi saw the ceiling jutsu get activated and quickly jumped out of the way as the ceiling barrier began to close in around the Kayubi and began to wrap around him. No I will not be sealed again after just getting free. It yelled as it fought against the ceiling barrier around it making the four cage level shinobi grit their teeth while Kashina who still ached form earlier had to fight form passing out. Keep going, we need to use more chakra, Minato said to the others who nodded and gritted their teeth as they all poured out more chakra. The Kayubi tried to move around but Hiruzen elongated his adamantine staff and hit the Kayubi right in the snout causing it to twitch in surprise. The Kayubi struggled and struggled but Gamabunta and Gamakan appeared by its side and did slammed into its sides, panicking it between their giant bodies. Take that you giant furball, Gamabunta declared as the net of seals began to cover over the entire giant form of the Kayubi despite its declaring that it would not be sealed into some brat. Knowing that the sealing was about to be completed Serutobi stood in front of the Kayubi looking it straight in its red eyes, not showing a hint of fear even when it turned to stare at him. You are too dangerous to be allowed to roam around freely, he said making the Kayubi go wide-eyed at Serutobi's words as someone familiar from the past said the very same words. Hashirama Senju stood in front of the Kayubi as the giant fox demon was being pinned down to the ground with large wooden roots bursting out of the ground which wrapped themselves around the Kayubi and keeping in submission. The first Hokage looked in the Kayubi's eyes with a sad but determined look on his face. You are too dangerous to be allowed to roam freely. I am sorry but to protect the village in this world, this must be done. A snarl ripped form its mouth as the Kayubi began to struggle against the net of seals making the four sealers have a moment of struggle as it fought against them but the net had already covered the Kayubi completely. Kashina drove her kanai into the ground first signaling she was done, then Tsunade and then followed by Jiraiya and finally Minato. No. The Kayubi roared Minato through one of his three-pronged kanai at its head which when hid dispersed an eight trigram seal on top of its head. Minato looked down at his daughter with a sad and apologetic look on his face before he made the necessary hand seals. Eight trigram seal, 
he called out as the blood marking and kanjis he made earlier began to move onto the baby's stomach and wrap around in a spiral-like formation with eight symbols around it. Four at the top and four on the bottom. The Kayubi's body changed in a giant shroud of orange chakra as it's continued to try and break out of the four-corner ceiling barrier but the eight trigram seal appeared on its stomach before it just became a cluster of chakra. Letting out one last roar that seemed to echo and be louder than the rest, the Kayubi began to get sucked into the eight trigram seal on Mito's stomach until eventually the Kayubi had completely vanished leaving only the five shinobi and a baby left in the area. When it was over the area was just silent as they all looked at the baby solemnly thinking how unfair it was that after being born not even an hour ago, she already had to carry such a heavy burden. Mito, Kashina muttered as she went to walk over to her daughter. Though the toll of the ceiling and getting the Kayubi finally began to hit her as she tripped over her feet and collapsed onto the ground, sheer exhaustion taking over. Kashina, Minato called out as Tsunade put the little girl in her arms and watched as Minato ran to his wife. The four all appeared around her as Minato rested her gently in his lap with a worried look on his face. Tsunade checked her pulse and her breathing but smiled and breathed out easily. She will be okay. She is just exhausted which I am not surprised about after what she had been through today. Let's get them both to the hospital. I have the nurses looking after Eiji along with a few Chunin bodyguards to be on the safe side. And we have a private room set up for her which we were going to transfer her to once the twins were birthed, Minato said as Tsunade nodded. Flash her there and make sure to put her straight to bed. She will be weak for a few days but her Uzumaki blood will do the rest. And take me with you so that I can check on the other bay, she said with Minato nodding in agreement as he picked Kashina up bridal style. Minato was about to go before he had a pained look on his face and looked over at Serutobi. Serutobi I am sorry I could not protect Bawako, he said wanting to send the older Hokage his sympathies. The third got a sad look on his face as he silently mourned his wife's death but he knew such a thing would have to wait until later. So for now he just nodded his thanks to Minato while Jiraiya patted his sensei's shoulder. Minato is about to flash this time when Tsunade grabbed a hold of his sleeve with Mito still in her arms but then another thought crossed him. Naruto. Someone will need to collect Naruto. Jiraiya looked ready to offer to get him but Hiruzen beat him to it. I can do that, I will bring him to the hospital since I am sure he will want to see that his family is safe. Minato nodded his thanks and within a second disappeared in a yellow flash along with Kashina, Tsunade and Mito. No longer needing to stay in the area, Serutobi and Jiraiya took off back to the village. In village, what's happening? Naruto asked for Kurinai's arms as they watched as the barrier that was stopping them from leaving disappeared and a few of the Chunin and Janin that fought against the Kayubi appeared in front of them. They explained how the Kayubi was defeated though they never said how. It did not matter though since the younger generation all cheered. The only one who was not cheering was little Naruto who just wanted to find his Kachan in Tusan. Naruto the young boy heard as he looked over form all the chattering around him to see Serutobi approaching him. Gigi, Naruto cried as he jumped out of Kurinai's arms and jumped into the embrace of the old Hokage. Where is Kachan and Tusan? Are they okay? He asked with tears threatening to spill again. Serutobi soothed him and calmed him down as best he could but he knew the boy wanted to see she parents. They are fine Naruto, they are at the hospital with Tsunade, Jiraiya and your baby brother and sister. Naruto's eyes went a little wide when he heard brother and sister and it only made him want to get there quicker. Your mother will most likely be asleep so remember to be quiet when we get there since today has been very taxing for her, he said as Naruto quickly nodded his head. When he did Serutobi said goodbye and thanked Kurinai, Asuma, Gai and Kakashi for watching over him in this time of need and quickly set off for the hospital. It did not take long him long though when he did get to the hospital it was all in a rush as stretchers with people being carried on it were brought in and some of the nurses working on the injured in the lobbies or in the hallways. He spotted Tsunade's apprentice Shizune ordering a few nurses while helping a young Kunoichi, quickly showing how far her studies with Tsunade were coming along. Are all these people going to be okay Gigi? Naruto asked looking around t all the hurt shinobi. Eventually they will. They had a hard fought battle tonight and a lot of people got hurt because of it. However we have some of the best doctors around in Konoha, as well as Tsunade so they will be back on their feet in no time, he said as Naruto nodded. They walked up a few flights of stairs before they arrived at the prenatal zone. 
Naruto saw a few of the pregnant mom's women around who had been sent to the hospital to make sure their babies were okay. One of which was his mother's friend Hitomi Hayuga who as far as he knew was expecting a young girl. Leaving that little area Serutobi walked them down a quiet corridor before stopping at the third on the right. Here we go, Serutobi said to Naruto as he opened the door and walked inside. As soon as they walked in he spotted his father with Jiraiya and Tsunade in the corner of the room talking with serious expression on their faces. He saw they were all looking tired, especially Minato and his his clothes were ripped in a few places and he rubbed his eyes a little. To San, Naruto quietly called remembering what Serutobi about him needing to be quiet. He saw Minato look in his direction and a smile appear on his face. Naru-chan, he said leaving the corner and taking his son from Serutobi. I missed you too San. I thought you and Ka-chan were hurt, Naruto said beginning to sob as his father held him close and soothed him as best he could. It's okay Naru-chan, your Ka-chan and I are made of some pretty strong stuff. It will take more than that overgrown fuzzball to hurt us, he said trying to make his son smile though he just sobbed a little harder. Wanting to calm his son down he made Naruto look at him. Hey Naruto-chan. Would you like to see your new baby brother and sister?" he asked. Naruto's eyes went a little wide but nodded his head. Minato smiled and led his Naruto over to the other side of the room. Naruto turned his head and saw Kashina sleeping on the bed with her red hair swept onto one side. Ka-chan, he said looking at her. She is okay Naruto. She has had a long and tiring night and just need the rest. I know she was very worried about you but I know she will be very happy to see you in the morning. Minato said as they reached who they were looking for. Situated next to Kashina's bed was a cot with two little bundles sleeping peacefully inside. One was wrapped in a blue blanket while the other was in blue. The little boy had tanned skin like Naruto and Minato and had blonde hair but could see small red streak in it. The little girl had similar hair like her twin but her skin was a lighter shade like Kashina's. However Naruto noticed that on her cheeks she had whisker-like marks. Though he and his little brother has similar marks, the ones on his sister were more noticeable and definer. Naru-chan I would like to you to meet your brother and sister Eiji and Mito Uzumaki Namikaze. Minato leaned down with Naruto still in his arms and towards the sleeping twins. Naruto gasped a little as he looked at his younger siblings and outstretched his right hand and gently stroked his sister's cheek. Mito-chan, he said as a smile made its way onto his face. Minato, Jiraiya. Tsunade and Serutobi smiled as they watched Naruto interact with his two new siblings. After such a long day and after all the tragic occurrences that had happened, it was good to finally see something good happen considering the twins' birth which should have been a joyous moment was interrupted by a madman in the attack. He did the same with Eiji and laughed when the baby wrinkled his nose from the contact. Two San can I hold them? Naruto asked looking his father in the eyes. Minato smiled and nodded. Okay but one at a time, he said as he put Naruto down and the boy sat on a nearby chair. Minato gently picked up Mito and walked towards Naruto. Remember to be careful of her head, he said to his oldest son who nodded and gently put her in Naruto's arm. Tsunade and Jiraiya sat beside him looking down at the little girl. Her tiny little body lay against Naruto's as she rested in his arms though since he was only five she also laid across his lap. Hi Mito-chan. I'm your big brother, Naruto he said making the others smile as Minato watched him with Eiji resting in his arms. Just as he spoke Mito's eyes began to flicker before she opened her eyes revealing s pair of blue eyes looking up at him. She has your eyes too San, he said looking up at his dad who was now a little in front of him. It seems she does and it looks like Eiji has the same eyes too, he said showing that Eiji was awake as well now and showing his similar blue as well. Naruto looked down at his sister and saw she was looking up at him with a curious expression on her face as if she was trying to figure out who he was. After the two looked like they were having a staring competition with each other Mito then giggled a soft yet melody-like laugh that made everyone smile. I think she likes you Naru-chan, Minato said laughing a little. What's not to like about my little Naru-chan, a tired voice said making them turn around to see Kashina with her eyes open and looking at the scene with a smile on her face. Kashina, the adults all said surprised to see her awake while Naruto looked to his mother and a new set of tears began to form. He gave Mito to Tsunade who happily took the little girl before he made his way towards Kashina. 
Ka Chan, he said as he crawled onto her bed and lay next to her. Naru Chan don't cry, everything is okay, she said softly but quickly found him hugging into her side. She kissed the top of his head and wrapped her arms around him. I thought you got hurt Ka Chan. I was worried, he sobbed as Kashina rubbed his back soothingly in circles trying to calm her down. I felt you and Tu San and you felt hurt with the big vile horrible chakra nearby, he said catching the attention of everyone in the room. Naruto what do you mean you felt everyone? Minato asked looking at his son with a curious expression. I don't know how to describe it. I could just feel where everyone was. I could feel when Pervy Sage and Ba Chan appeared on their big animals and I could feel you and Ka Chan were out of the village. Naru Chan can describe what you felt when you sensed your parents, Serutobi asked getting a little intrigued about this information. Well I could feel Tu San and he felt calm but worried and a little scared. Ka Chan felt warm but tired and frustrated. Then there was that big chakra that just felt so, dot big. Like there was no end to it and felt so dark. Everyone was surprised at what Naruto described. A sensor, Jiraiya said surprised. Naruto has some kind of sensor-like ability. And to feel the two of you almost two miles away from the village means it is powerful and has a long range. Both Minato and Kashina looked at Naruto a little proudly though they did feel a little worried. They were not going to begin training him until he was six but now that these sensor-like abilities had revealed themselves, they knew it was time to start a year early. Plus by the large chakra he said he could feel, they knew it was the Kyubi he felt. However they were not sure how to train him since they knew they were going to be extremely busy with the twins, Mito being a Jinchuriki and making sure the seal is function correct. Plus there was healing the village from the damage of the attack. The adults began to talk to each other about Naruto's surprising new ability and the events of the night, not seeing Naruto slowly falling asleep in his mother's embrace. The night that started it all. Today was October 10th, the day most had recognized as any other ordinary day just like any other as the citizens and shinobi of Konoha settled down and began to drift to sleep as the midnight slowly began to approach them. However none of the residents of Konoha were prepared for the surprise attack by none other than the nine-tailed demon fox. Roaring as loudly as it could it began to tear into the village as its shinobi began to rush towards the fox and protect their homes and families. As that happened the village civilians as well as the younger generation of leaf shinobi were taken underground, though the younger shinobis against their will since they wanted to protect their homes. We can help fight, don't make just sit stand here and watch, a 17 year old raven haired girl with red eyes declared as a man of similar features stood a little in front of her, just out of reach of the barrier they were being kept behind. This fight is for the older generation. If we fail then it will be up to you, the younger generation to carry on our wool of fire and protect the village. Kuranai, he said looking at the raven haired girl, become a great kunoichi and makes me a proud father and a proud grandfather one day, he said before he disappeared into a swirl of leaves, intent on joining the fight to protect the leaf from the rampaging biju. Kuranai shook a little angrily as her father left and let a stray tear go down her face before a hand placed itself on her shoulder. Looking over her shoulder she saw Asuma Serutobi, a 17-year-old recently promoted Jonin give her a look that said, believe in him and follow his words. Not liking it she nodded her head in agreement despite still not liking it. Beside her, her fellow graduation class members and current Anbu Kakashi Hitaki and his self-proclaimed eternal rival Might Guy stood there silently as they observed the beast attacking their home with emotionless looks on their face. Despite that she knew they along with everyone else all had the same feeling of wanting to do their duty and not feel so useless against the Kyubi. As they observed and watched, a small whimper came from behind them making them turn around and made their eyes soften. Standing behind them was little five-year-old Naruto Namikaze, still wearing his blue pajamas with little shurikens decorating around them and a little grey robe wrapped around him. He looked just like his father, the fourth Hokage with his tanned skin and blonde hair and even had a similar personality to him which made him quite quiet but smart for his age. His eyes though were violet just like his mother's Kashina Uzumaki and had bursts of her personality at times. He was born on October 3rd and had just celebrated his fifth birthday a week ago with his father and his heavily pregnant mother who was expecting twins. His parents adored him and spoiled him to a degree though they were happy that Naruto never got bratty. He was a very kind, fun-loving though quiet little boy who in return loved his parents very much, especially his mother Kashina. 
He was very excited when he found out he was going to be a big brother and had did his best to help his mother around the house and try to cause her as little trouble and stress as he could. Sometime he even talked to his little siblings in his mother's tummy which always made Minato and Kashina smile at him proudly. Where are Ka-chan and Tu-san? He asked as he watched the fox destroy his home shifting in his spot a little nervously. Kuranai went down to her knees and picked him up into her arms trying to soothe him. Your Ka-chan and Tu-san will be okay Naruto. Remember your Tu-san is the strongest in the village and your mother is no pushover either, Kakashi said trying to lift the boy's spirits. B but Ka-chan has my baby brother and sister in her tummy. What if she gets hurt? That won't happen Naru-chan. Your two san won't let any harm come to them. You have my word on it, she said as Naruto nodded and watched as he nuzzled into the older girl's neck. The rest was silent as they continued to watch as the shinobi of the village tried to push the Kyubi away but were getting thrown away effortlessly by the fox. Just as it looked like the Nine Tails was going to storm forward a large elongated staff hit its square in the stomach and slowly started pushing the fox away and out of the village. When the fox looked to see where it came from, standing on top of one of the buildings was none other than Hiruzen Serutobi, the third Hokage. Gigi, Naruto said just managing to see his grandfather-like figure battle the Kyubi while the younger generation smiled at the arrival of the powerful Leaf Shinobi. As he watched the third Hokage battle the Kyubi with long-range support from some of the other Leaf Shinobi, Naruto felt two strong energy signatures appear nearby and land just beside the third Hokage. Naruto smiled though when he recognized the signatures. Pervy Sage and Ba-chan are here. He said as the Kuranai, Kakashi, Asuma and Gai looked at him in confusion not entirely sure what he was talking about. As soon as they did two large plumes of smoke appeared in front of the Kyubi revealing a large white slug with blue stripes going down its back and a large purple frog with a shield and Sasamata in its hands. On top of their heads none other than Jiraiya and Tsunade, two of the leaf villages Sanin. When they saw Jiraiya and Tsunade begin battling the Kyubi, the four younger shinobi looked at Naruto in surprise. How did he know they were there? I did not even sense them, they all thought but left it alone for now and would get back to it later. Jiraiya-kun, Tsunade-chan, Serutobi greeted a little out of breath as the two Sanin nodded towards him. Sensei, if the Kyubi is here I can only guess something went wrong with Kashina's while she was in labor. Jiraiya asked. That seems to be the case. Though I have not seen her or Minato yet, I don't know where they are but we have to keep the Kyubi away. No matter what, he said stealing his voice as they both nodded. However just as the fox was about to launch an attack towards them, Minato appeared above the Kyubi's head looking a little beaten up and then disappeared with the Kyubi in a yellow flash away from the village making everything suddenly go quiet. Where did they go? Tsunade asked as they began to scanning the areas before they saw a large explosion a few mile out form the village. There, Jiraiya said before the three cage level shinobi began running as fast as they could towards the site with the summons following after. The other shinobi watched as the fourth Hokage and Naruto's father vanished with the Kyubi making many cheer though only four and a little boy knew it was not over yet. Naruto closed his eyes and searched for his dad, having never told anyone this. He had always been able to sense where people were. He recognized his parents' signatures like the back of his hand. After a minute of searching he found them outside the village but he sensed his mother was hurt. It made him want to go to her and stop the Kyubi from hurting her. He hopped out Kuranai's arms and started running forward but Kuranai and Kakashi caught him. Naruto you mustn't. Just because the Kyubi is not there does not mean it is still not dangerous. Kakashi urged but the little blonde struggled as Kurnai placed him gently against her chest despite his wriggling. But I have two. Ka-chan is hurt, I know it. She is with two San and the Kyubi. Now that made the others have their eyes widen. He can sense that far away? They thought since they knew the Hokage must have teleported the Kyubi a fair distance away from the village. The range that Naruto seemed to have of sensing people was vast vast. Definitely need to look into that on a later date. Asuma said to Kuranai who nodded since a sensing ability of that magnitude sounded like a real blessing. Have faith Naru-chan, they will be okay, Kuranai said as Naruto's violet eyes look out across the village. Battle site, Kashina breathed in heavily as multiple chakra chains were shot out of her back and keeping the Kyubi in its place while Gamabunta, the chief toad was on its back trying his best to keep it pinned down. 
Moments later Minato suddenly flashed in front of her. In his hands was their newborn daughter, one of the beautiful twins his wife had given birth to not long ago. Her body was in pain all over after the Kayubi was ripped out of her but she willed herself to stay awake. She could not let her family and the village down. I'm sorry Kashina, but this is the only way, he said solemnly. If we seal the beast back into you then you will die and I can't let that happen. I can't let the twins and Naruto live a life without their mother. Kashina did not like it but she knew it had to be done. A newborn baby was the best option to seal the beast away in. But to make her children carry such a burden made a dent in her heart. It was a burden she never wanted one of her children to have to hold. How are we going to seal it? Kashina asked as she tried to stand up but felt the Kayubi struggling against her chakra chains. Though she was a Fuinjutsu master, that were only a few methods of sealing that could contain the nine-tailed fox and knew there would be a struggle since the Kayubi no doubt did not want to go back to be sealed away again. I have a plan for that. I can sense Jiraiya Sensei, Tsunade and Serutobi are on their way here. When they get here we will perform the four-corner sealing method. Once we get it trapped, I will seal it away with the eight trigrams. The four-corner sealing method might not work Minato, it was designed to hold the biju up to the six tails. The Kayubi might be too powerful for it, Kashina said concerned since they only had one shot at this. I know but with five cage level shinobi here and four to perform the ritual, it can be done. It will be close but it can be accomplished. Kashina bit her lip, it was not the best idea but it could work. The eight trigrams would definitely hold the Kayubi, she just hoped the four corner barrier seal would be enough. Incoming. Gamabunta shouted as the Kayubi got one of its claws out of the chains and sent it towards them. I will not be sealed away again, he roared showing his target was the baby Mito. No. Both Minato and Kashina shouted as they jumped in the way to protect their daughter from harm. They waited for the strike to hit but suddenly felt a large shockwave hit them from behind. Looking around they saw Gamakan deflected the Kayubi claw with his shield. Minato. Three voices called as Hiruzen. Tsunade and Jiraiya appeared beside them. While Gamabunta and Gamakan kept the Kayubi pinned down, Tsunade began to heal Kashina as Minato explained the plan to them all. The three newly arrived adults looked down at the baby girl in sadness knowing she rough patches she was bound to encounter in her life. They did not like it but they knew it had to be done. Does anyone know if Naru-chan is okay? Kashina asked thinking about her oldest and firstborn. She saw Hiruzen nod his head. Last I checked he was in the protective barrier being looked after by Kakashi, Asuma, Gai and Kurunai. He is safe and is unharmed. Kashina nodded and breathed a little easier knowing her Naruto was safe and had not been caught in the fox's rampage. As Tsunade healed Kashina's body enough for her to move and access her chakra, Hiruzen stood in front of the Kayubi with the intent of helping keep the Kayubi at bay while the other four took the four points around the Kayubi to begin the sealing. From Minato's spot he placed his hand on the ground and summoned a small altar and gently placed his new daughter on top of it. She was sound asleep which surprised him from all the noise but he guessed that was more a good thing. He began drawing on the necessary symbols in blood around the baby and onto the baby girl's stomach. After a moment the seal was ready. Everyone had time now, Minato declared as Kashina retracted her chains which released the nine-tailed fox and made it roar from its spot. Gamakan and Gamabunta did their best to keep it down as did Serutobi but the Nine Tails was the strongest of the tailed beasts for a reason and was very quickly getting out of their grasp. Minato nodded to everyone as he, Kashina, Jiraiya and Tsunade all prepared and channeled their chakra and made the necessary hand seals. Dog, Snake, Boar, Tiger, Four Corner Sealing Jutsu, the four all shouted as their blue chakra burst from all around them and began to create a large net. The net began to expand before it was big enough to cover the Kayubi. In each of their hands was Kanai that once the net was securely placed around the Kayubi, they would drive the Kanai into the ground and hold the Kayubi in the ceiling barrier. Gamakan, Gamabunta and Serutobi saw the ceiling jutsu get activated and quickly jumped out of the way as the ceiling barrier began to close in around the Kayubi and began to wrap around him. No I will not be sealed again after just getting free, it yelled as it fought against the ceiling barrier around it making the four cage level shinobi grit their teeth while Kashina who still ached form earlier had to fight form passing out. Keep going, we need to use more chakra, 
Minato said to the others who nodded and gritted their teeth as they all poured out more chakra. The Kyubi tried to move around but Hiruzen elongated his adamantine staff and hit the Kyubi right in the snout causing it to twitch in surprise. The Kyubi struggled and struggled but Gamabunta and Gamakan appeared by its side and did slammed into its sides, panicking it between their giant bodies. Take that you giant furball, Gamabunta declared as the net of seals began to cover over the entire giant form of the Kyubi despite its declaring that it would not be sealed into some brat. Knowing that the sealing was about to be completed Serutobi stood in front of the Kyubi looking it straight in its red eyes, not showing a hint of fear even when it turned to stare at him. You are too dangerous to be allowed to roam around freely, he said making the Kyubi go wide-eyed at Serutobi's words as someone familiar from the past said the very same words. Hashirama Senju stood in front of the Kyubi as the giant fox demon was being pinned down to the ground with large wooden roots bursting out of the ground which wrapped themselves around the Kyubi and keeping in submission. The first Hokage looked in the Kyubi's eyes with a sad but determined look on his face. You are too dangerous to be allowed to roam freely. I am sorry but to protect the village in this world, this must be done. A snarl ripped form its mouth as the Kyubi began to struggle against the net of seals making the four sealers have a moment of struggle as it fought against them but the net had already covered the Kyubi completely. Kashina drove her kanai into the ground first signaling she was done, then Tsunade and then followed by Jiraiya and finally Minato. No, the Kyubi roared Minato through one of his three-pronged kanai at its head which when hid dispersed an eight trigram seal on top of its head. Minato looked down at his daughter with a sad and apologetic look on his face before he made the necessary hand seals. Eight trigrams seal, he called out as the blood marking and kanjis he made earlier began to move onto the baby's stomach and wrap around in a spiral-like formation with eight symbols around it. Four at the top and four on the bottom. The Kyubi's body changed in a giant shroud of orange chakra as it's continued to try and break out of the four-corner sealing barrier but the eight trigrams seal appeared on its stomach before it just became a cluster of chakra. Letting out one last roar that seemed to echo and be louder than the rest, the Kyubi began to get sucked into the eight trigrams seal on Mito's stomach until eventually the Kyubi had completely vanished leaving only the five shinobi and a baby left in the area. When it was over the area was just silent as they all looked at the baby solemnly thinking how unfair it was that after being born not even an hour ago, she already had to carry such a heavy burden. Mito, Kashina muttered as she went to walk over to her daughter. Though the toll of the ceiling and getting the Kyubi finally began to hit her as she tripped over her feet and collapsed onto the ground, sheer exhaustion taking over. Kashina, Minato called out as Tsunade put the little girl in her arms and watched as Minato ran to his wife. The four all appeared around her as Minato rested her gently in his lap with a worried look on his face. Tsunade checked her pulse and her breathing but smiled and breathed out easily. She will be okay, she is just exhausted which I am not surprised about after what she had been through today. Let's get them both to the hospital, I have the nurses looking after Eiji along with a few Chunin bodyguards to be on the safe side. And we have a private room set up for her which we were going to transfer her to once the twins were birthed. Minato said as Tsunade nodded. Flash her there and make sure to put her straight to bed. She will be weak for a few days but her Uzumaki blood will do the rest. And take me with you so that I can check on the other bay, she said with Minato nodding in agreement as he picked Kashina up bridal style. Minato was about to go before he had a pained look on his face and looked over at Serutobi. Serutobi I am sorry I could not protect Bawako, he said wanting to send the older Hokage his sympathies. The third got a sad look on his face as he silently mourned his wife's death but he knew such a thing would have to wait until later. So for now he just nodded his thanks to Minato while Jiraiya patted his sensei's shoulder. Minato is about to flash this time when Tsunade grabbed a hold of his sleeve with Mito still in her arms but then another thought crossed him. Naruto. Someone will need to collect Naruto. Jiraiya looked ready to offer to get him but Hiruzen beat him to it. I can do that. I will bring him to the hospital since I am sure he will want to see that his family is safe. Minato nodded his thanks and within a second disappeared in a yellow flash along with Kashina, Tsunade and Mito. No longer needing to stay in the area, Serutobi and Jiraiya took off back to the village. In village, what's happening? Naruto asked for Kurinai's arms as they watched as the barrier that was stopping them from leaving disappeared and a few of the Chunin and Janin that fought against the Kyubi appeared in front of them. 
They explained how the Kayubi was defeated though they never said how. It did not matter though since the younger generation all cheered. The only one who was not cheering was little Naruto who just wanted to find his Kachan and Tusan. Naruto the young boy heard as he looked over form all the chattering around him to see Serutobi approaching him. Gigi, Naruto cried as he jumped out of Kurunai's arms and jumped into the embrace of the old Hokage. Where is Ka-chan and Tusan? Are they okay? He asked with tears threatening to spill again. Serutobi soothed him and calmed him down as best he could but he knew the boy wanted to see she parents. They are fine Naruto, they are at the hospital with Tsunade. Jiraiya and your baby brother and sister. Naruto's eyes went a little wide when he heard brother and sister and it only made him want to get there quicker. Your mother will most likely be asleep so remember to be quiet when we get there since today has been very taxing for her, he said as Naruto quickly nodded his head. When he did Serutobi said goodbye and thanked Kurunai, Asuma, Gai and Kakashi for watching over him in this time of need and quickly set off for the hospital. It did not take long him long though when he did get to the hospital it was all in a rush as stretchers with people being carried on it were brought in and some of the nurses working on the injured in the lobbies or in the hallways. He spotted Tsunade's apprentice Shizune ordering a few nurses while helping a young Kunoichi, quickly showing how far her studies with Tsunade were coming along. Are all these people going to be okay Gigi? Naruto asked looking around t all the hurt shinobi. Eventually they will. They had a hard-fought battle tonight and a lot of people got hurt because of it. However, we have some of the best doctors around in Konoha, as well as Tsunade so they will be back on their feet in no time, he said as Naruto nodded. They walked up a few flights of stairs before they arrived at the prenatal zone. Naruto saw a few of the pregnant mom's women around who had been sent to the hospital to make sure their babies were okay. One of which was his mother's friend Hitomi Hayuga who as far as he knew was expecting a young girl. Leaving that little area Serutobi walked them down a quiet corridor before stopping at the third on the right. Here we go, Serutobi said to Naruto as he opened the door and walked inside. As soon as they walked in he spotted his father with Jiraiya and Tsunade in the corner of the room talking with serious expression on their faces. He saw they were all looking tired, especially Minato and his his clothes were ripped in a few places and he rubbed his eyes a little. Too San. Naruto quietly called remembering what Serutobi about him needing to be quiet. He saw Minato look in his direction and a smile appear on his face. Naru-chan, he said leaving the corner and taking his son from Serutobi. I missed you too San. I thought you and Ka-chan were hurt, Naruto said beginning to sob as his father held him close and soothed him as best he could. It's okay Naru-chan, your Ka-chan and I are made of some pretty strong stuff. It will take more than that overgrown fuzzball to hurt us, he said trying to make his son smile though he just sobbed a little harder. Wanting to calm his son down he made Naruto look at him. Hey Naruto-chan, would you like to see your new baby brother and sister, he asked. Naruto's eyes went a little wide but nodded his head. Minato smiled and led his Naruto over to the other side of the room. Naruto turned his head and saw Kashina sleeping on the bed with her red hair swept onto one side. Ka-chan, he said looking at her. She is okay Naruto, she has had a long and tiring night and just need the rest. I know she was very worried about you but I know she will be very happy to see you in the morning, Minato said as they reached who they were looking for. Situated next to Kashina's bed was a cot with two little bundles sleeping peacefully inside. One was wrapped in a blue blanket while the other was in blue. The little boy had tanned skin like Naruto and Minato and had blonde hair but could see small red streak in it. The little girl had similar hair like her twin but her skin was a lighter shade like Kashina's. However Naruto noticed that on her cheeks she had whisker-like marks. Though he and his little brother has similar marks, the ones on his sister were more noticeable and definer. Naru-chan I would like to you to meet your brother and sister Eiji and Mito Uzumaki Namikaze. Minato leaned down with Naruto still in his arms and towards the sleeping twins. Naruto gasped a little as he looked at his younger siblings and outstretched his right hand and gently stroked his sister's cheek. Mito-chan, he said as a smile made its way onto his face. Minato, Jiraiya, Tsunade and Serutobi smiled as they watched Naruto interact with his two new siblings. After such a long day and after all the tragic occurrences that had happened, 
It was good to finally see something good happen considering the twins' birth which should have been a joyous moment was interrupted by a madman in the attack. He did the same with Eiji and laughed when the baby wrinkled his nose from the contact. Two san can I hold them? Naruto asked looking his father in the eyes. Minato smiled and nodded. Okay but one at a time, he said as he put Naruto down and the boy sat on a nearby chair. Minato gently picked up Mito and walked towards Naruto. Remember to be careful of her head, he said to his oldest son who nodded and gently put her in Naruto's arm. Tsunade and Jiraiya sat beside him looking down at the little girl. Her tiny little body lay against Naruto's as she rested in his arms though since he was only five she also laid across his lap. Hi Mito-chan, I'm your big brother, Naruto he said making the others smile as Minato watched him with Eiji resting in his arms. Just as he spoke Mito's eyes began to flicker before she opened her eyes revealing s pair of blue eyes looking up at him. She has your eyes too San, he said looking up at his dad who was now a little in front of him. It seems she does and it looks like Eiji has the same eyes too, he said showing that Eiji was awake as well now and showing his similar blue as well. Naruto looked down at his sister and saw she was looking up at him with a curious expression on her face as if she was trying to figure out who he was. After the two looked like they were having a staring competition with each other Mito then giggled a soft yet melody-like laugh that made everyone smile. I think she likes you Naru-chan, Minato said laughing a little. What's not to like about my little Naru-chan, a tired voice said making them turn around to see Kashina with her eyes open and looking at the scene with a smile on her face. Kashina, the adults all said surprised to see her awake while Naruto looked to his mother and a new set of tears began to form. He gave Mito to Tsunade who happily took the little girl before he made his way towards Kashina. Ka-chan, he said as he crawled onto her bed and lay next to her. Naru-chan don't cry, everything is okay, she said softly but quickly found him hugging into her side. She kissed the top of his head and wrapped her arms around him. I thought you got hurt Ka-chan. I was worried, he sobbed as Kashina rubbed his back soothingly in circles trying to calm her down. I felt you and two san and you felt hurt with the big vile horrible chakra nearby, he said catching the attention of everyone in the room. Naruto what do you mean you felt everyone? Minato asked looking at his son with a curious expression. I don't know how to describe it. I could just feel where everyone was. I could feel when pervy sage and ba chan appeared on their big animals and I could feel you and ka chan were out of the village. Naru chan can describe what you felt when you sensed your parents. Serutobi asked getting a little intrigued about this information. Well I could feel too San and he felt calm but worried and a little scared. Ka Chan felt warm but tired and frustrated. Then there was that big chakra that just felt so, dot big. Like there was no end to it and felt so dark. Everyone was surprised at what Naruto described. A sensor, Jiraiya said surprised. Naruto has some kind of sensor-like ability. And to feel the two of you almost two miles away from the village means it is powerful and has a long range. Both Minato and Kashina looked at Naruto a little proudly though they did feel a little worried. They were not going to begin training him until he was six but now that these sensor-like abilities had revealed themselves, they knew it was time to start a year early. Plus by the large chakra he said he could feel, they knew it was the Kyubi he felt. However they were not sure how to train him since they knew they were going to be extremely busy with the twins, Mito being a Jinchuriki and making sure the seal is function correct. Plus there was healing the village from the damage of the attack. The adults began to talk to each other about Naruto's surprising new ability and the events of the night, not seeing Naruto slowly falling asleep in his mother's embrace. The first step. Life in the Leaf Village slowly began to return to normal a month after the attack as the civilians and shinobi of the Leaf worked together to fix the damage the Kyubi had caused. Most of the building that had been destroyed was at the front half of the village leaving the back half mostly unscathed which thankfully included the hospital, the academy, the graveyard and most of the shinobi clan compounds. The only clan compounds that had any damage was the Inazuka and the Abarame though thankfully they were only minor and had been rebuilt and put back to normal within a few weeks. The civilian and shinobi worked away to help rebuild their homes while large groups of leaf shinobi went out to complete the day-to-day -day mission they were given in order to show that the leaf was still strong and they were not going anywhere. At the Namikaze residence all was quiet before a baby's cry rang out through the house alerting those that were inside. 
The Uzumaki Namikaze family could have had their own clan compound or lived in the Hokage mansion if they wanted but Minato and Kashina never wanted the big lavish lifestyle. They were more than content with their six-bedroom house which has cozy, warm and family feel to it. Plus with only five of them, there was just no need for a big clan compound. Naruto raced from his room and into the nursery where he already found his mother holding and rocking his sister Mito back to sleep. Is Mito-chan okay ka chan He asked walking in front of his mother as he saw Mito's wriggling form in his mother's arms. Kashina looked towards her oldest son and smiled. Yes she is okay Naru-chan. She is just being a little fussy. She seems to have a lot of energy like another little someone when he was this age. She said laughing a little at his big smile he was giving her. Naruto turned towards the crib and as his little brother Eiji still sleeping peacefully. Both babies were very active he had noticed though they never seemed to wake up at the same time during the night. He looked at his mother and saw her yawn a little. Are you okay Ka-chan? You look sleepy. He asked with a worried look on his face touching his mother's sleeve. She nodded her head a little and noticed Mito was calming down and her eyes were beginning to drift off again. She delicately placed her back in the crib and saw she stayed quiet. Don't worry about me Naru-chan. I'm just feeling a little tired. Having two new babies will do that to someone. I will be fine, I promise. She said as Naruto nodded though the little frown on his face showed he was not all that convinced. Kashina was about to move but saw Naruto holding a book in his hands. Naru-chan what do you have there? She asked taking the book gently from his hands and crouching down in front of him. Looking at the book she saw it read Chakra for Beginners. She looked at Naruto and saw him shuffling a little. Is my little Naru-chan wanting to become a ninja like his two San and Ka-chan? She asked teasingly and saw him nod his head though he was looking down at floor in embarrassment. What brought this on? I. I want to get strong so I can protect you, he said quietly to himself though Kashina had heard him and was a little surprised by his answer. To protect me? She said in a sweet voice. To protect you and Tu San, Mito Chan and Eiji Chan too. I don't want you to get hurt again. He said sniffling a little, but felt his mother's arms wrapping around him. Kashina had a smile on her face as she kissed the top of his head. My brave little Naru Chan, how lucky am I to have you as my baby? My big strong boy, she said leaning back and cupping his face in her hands and kissing the end of his nose making him wrinkle it. Do you think you could help me? He asked with a hopeful look on his face since he knew his mother was a powerful shinobi who was on par with his Ba-chan Tsunade. Kashina bit her lip a little and shook her head a little making Naruto feel a little disappointed. I am sorry Naru-chan but I am too busy to help you at the moment. Plus I have some of the other moms coming over in a little while. I would love to help you but it will have to be another time. But hey, she said giving him a smile. Why don't you ask you to San? I'm sure he would like to help you. She said, Naruto thought about it and nodded. I guess I could, he said with a smile. I'm sorry again Naru-chan. It's okay Ka-chan, you're busy so another time. He said making his mother smile as she watched him leave the room. She felt a little disappointed that she could not train him but she really was busy and just did not have the time. She had some of the other new shinobi moms coming over so they could catch up and so she could have them all meet Eiji and Mito. There was her oldest friend and childhood rival Makoto Uchiha who was brining over her youngest son Sasuke. Then there was Sume Inazuka who was bringing her son Kiba. Then there was Yoshino Nara and Inori Yamanaka who were bringing over their babies Shikamaru and Ino. Shaking her head knowing she could help him another time she continued with her work and preparing the living room for when the other mothers stopped by. Naruto meanwhile went into his father office at the back of the house and knocked on the door. Come in. He heard from behind the door and opened the door and walked in. Minato was hunched over his desk filling out some paperwork when Naruto walked in. Since the twins' birth he spent some of his time in his office at home instead if the Hokage office just so that if Kashina needed any help with the twins, he could be there to lend a hand. Hey Naru-chan, he said seeing Naruto walk through the door. He scooped Naruto up and put him on his lap getting a small laugh from his son. Is your Ka-chan okay? He asked wanting to know how his wife was managing. She is okay. She is getting ready for some of the other's mommies when they come over. Ah. Well then we best stay out of the way. You know what your Ka-chan is like when her girly friends come over. He said as they both laughed. 
Whenever Kashina and the other moms got together, Kashina and Makoto always ended up arguing whether it was over something as trivial as who has the best cooking to who won the most matches from their past spars. Even where they were pregnant there was a sense of competition from the two that drove both husbands into the crazy house. So is there something you need Naru-chan? Minato asked looking at his son. Naruto nodded and showed him the book. Minato took and looked at the cover and smiled at the title. So you want to start training to become a shinobi? You have already impressed me and the others with those sensor abilities you seem to have. Minato and the others were still a little astonished that Naruto had it since there was no indication of it before which made them think that Naruto was either not aware of it or it only manifested during the attack. Naruto nodded again. I was wondering if you could teach me how to use chakra since I want to get strong. And why do you want to get strong Naruto-chan? He asked. So I can protect my family and the village. The little boy in his lap said. Hearing his words Minato smiled a big smile and ruffled Naruto's hair. That's a great reason for wanting to get strong Naru-chan. If you have a goal like that then you will definitely become a strong shinobi one day. You think so? Naruto asked so innocently that if Kashina was there then she would have put him in a tight hug. I know so. Minato responded making Naruto smile. So do you think you could help me train? To San he asked hoping that his father would say yes. However his hopes were dashed when he saw him shake his head with an apologetic look on his face. I am sorry Naru chan but I am too busy right now. I need to get this paperwork done soon and then I have a meeting in half an hour. I don't have the time. Oh, Naruto said looking sad that his father could not help him either and now wondered who could help him. Maybe another time, huh? I can show you a few cool moves and I am sure your mother would like to show you a thing of two. He said encouragingly hoping it did not get him down. Okay to chan he Naruto said taking the book back from Minato. He got off his father's lap and went towards the door. Tu Chan is it okay to go down to the park? He asked just as his father was about to get back to work. Minato bit his lip. He did not mind Naruto going to the park but seeing as Naruto was only five, he did not want him going out on his own. He had made that mistake a few months ago and it ended with him getting a beating from his livid wife who was worried where her baby was all on his own. Of course he was then almost smothered to death by the hug his mothers gave him when he returned with Serutobi bringing him back. Well I guess that would be okay but I want you back here by 3 o'clock, he said getting a nod from Naruto. And you only go to the one that is a few minutes away, not the one in the center of the village. He got another nod, plus you have to have an Anbu follow you. Naruto nodded again before Minato sighed. Alright go on and have fun. But be careful, I will too chan. I promise. He said before he walked out. Minato sighed again before calling out Anbu. When he did an Anbu male with a lion mask appeared beside him. Follow my son and make sure he does not get into any trouble or gets hurt. Hi Hokage Sama, the Anbu said before he shunshined away and leaving Minato to get back to work. With Naruto. Naruto arrived at the small park and saw it was completely empty with only the wind moving the swing seats. His mother mostly took him here when she could while his dad did on the occasions when he was not busy. The park was only small but it was nearby and was a peaceful little spot that he always enjoyed. That was one thing Minato and Kashina had noticed about Naruto when he first started speaking. Naruto had always been quiet and only really spoke if it was worth saying or was important. But when he did he was very polite which many liked about him since most his age tended to blurt out whatever came to mind. Walking over and sitting on the seat he began to swing slowly before he looked at the book in his hand. He had bought this book from a shinobi bookshop the other day when Kakashi was taking him round the village. Apparently Kakashi need to collect some kind of book that Naruto was not allowed to see which made him pout. While that was happening Naruto was looking at the shinobi section. Though he could not read most of the titles very well he did pick up the chakra for beginner's book. He then asked Kakashi if he could get it for him. Kakashi took one look at the book before shrugging and paying for it much to Naruto's delight. Naruto opened the book and tried to read but the words were a little too long for him and he could not pronounce a few of the words correctly. He sat there trying to read it for about 10 minutes with squinted eyes before he got a little frustrated and put the book down on the ground beside him. How can I be a good ninja like Ka-chan and Tu-san if I can't even read well? He thought as he began to swing. He looked up on the top of a roof where he felt a fairly strong energy reside. 
Maybe that is the Anbu San Tu San sent to watch over me, he thought. After another few minutes of silence he heard a voice called him from behind. Looking behind him his expression brightened a little when he saw his Ba Chan's apprentice Shizun walking towards him with her usual kind smile on her face and with Tsunade's pet pig Tun Tun in her arms. Hi Shizun San, he said politely as the 17-year-old medic Nin took a seat next to him. He had met her a few times when Tsunade visited his family and she always found him adorable and cute. Plus she was always very kind to him. Hello Naru Chan, what did I tell you about calling me San? She said tapping his nose. You can either call me Shizun Chan or Shizun Ne Chan. Naruto nodded with a small smile on his face. Okay Ne Chan, he said making her smile. Oink, oink. Naruto giggled a little and petted Tun Tun. Hi Tun Tun he said as the pig nuzzled his leg. Now what are you doing here all by yourself? Is your Ka-chan or Tu-san not here? They were busy. Ka-chan has the other's clan mommies over for lunch and Tu-san is busy with paperwork. What about Kakashi or Jiraiya? She asked since she was aware Tsunade was at the hospital making sure the staff did not slack off. Naruto shook his head again. So you are here all by yourself? Shizun asked not liking that Naruto was here on his own. He shook his head once more. No the Anbu San is up on the roof though he feels a little bored. He said pointing to the roof of the nearby building which made Shizun look up. The Anbu is up there? How do you know? She asked looking a little skeptical. I can feel him up there. Oh that's right, Shizun thought. Lady Tsunade mentioned Naruto had some kind of sensor ability. Though I wonder how strong it is. For one so young to have sensor abilities was quite a feat in itself. It showed her just how strong Naruto might be when he grew older. Plus sensors were always a boost since shinobi that could detect others were very well looked upon and respected by others. Then how come you could not feel me coming towards you? She asked with Naruto struggling his little shoulders. I don't know, I was not really paying attention, he asked pouting a little making Shizun laugh into her sleeve. So do you think you could tell me what I am feeling at the moment? She said wanting to test how good these sensor abilities were. URM. Naruto started as he stared at Shizun. Shizun though had to stop herself from cuddling him since he looked very adorable when he tried to focus. They stayed silent for about a minute before Naruto answered. You feel happy and cheery but a little cheeky as well. He said. When he did Shizun clapped her hands showing she was impressed. That's very good Naru-chan. I see your Ba-chan's not over exaggerating when she said you had sensor ability. You could become a very strong ninja just like your parents with that ability. Really? You think I can? Tu San I could be strong because I want to protect my family and the village. He squeaked out. Then your Tu San is a very smart man. She said before she grabbed him and began tickling his stomach. No Nei Chan stop ha 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 it tickles. He cried out making Shizun laugh while Tun Tun looked like she was trying to link him too by licking his ear. Sitting up as she watched Tun Tun lick Naruto which made him giggle loudly, she noticed the book to the side and went to pick it up. Chakra for beginners she read before smiling and looking at Naruto. Naru Chan did you come here to try and learn how to be a ninja? She asked as Naruto sat up after Tun Tun stopped licking him and saw him nod his head. I tried to but I could not read it. There were too many big words and I did not understand it very well. He said looking a little embarrassed though the 17-year-old lifted his head up gently with her index finger. Don't worry Naru-chan there is nothing to be embarrassed about. I think it is a good thing that you are trying to learn this, it shows that you understand that to be a ninja you have to start right at the bottom and work your way up. Really? He asked with her nodding. If you like I can go over it with you and teach you how to access your chakra. She said making him get a hopeful look on his face. Really you would do that? Don't you have others things you need to do today? I already finished my shift at the hospital and it is either help you or get bored sitting at home. And how could I ever not want to help little Naru-chan? She picked Naruto up from his spot and put him in her lap as she leaned against the swing bars. The book was placed in front of them and together they began to read. Chakra is the mixture between spiritual energy and the body's physical energy. It is essential to every jutsu technique that has and ever will be created. Once molded, it can be channeled through the chakra circulatory system, which is to chakra as the regular circulatory system is to blood, to any of the 361 chakra points in the body. 
Through various methods, the most common of which is hand seals. Hand seals perform many ninjutsu, genjutsu, and other secret arts other than taijutsu. The exact amount of chakra necessary to perform a simple technique is manipulated through hand seals. This will vary between the simplest of jutsus to the most dynamic and most powerful. The hand seals are bird, boar, dog, dragon, ox, tiger, serpent, rat, horse, monkey, hare and ram. The two sat there for about an hour as Shizun read about chakra to Naruto and explained certain parts that he did not quite understand. She also made sure he was aware of what made up chakra and how many chakra points there are in the body, even pointing to the places where certain ones were on her arms. Do you understand Naruto? She asked him as he sat there on her lap and saw him nod as he looked at one of the pictures that represented physical and spiritual energies coming together to make chakra. Can we try to see if I can use my ch? Chakra? He asked since he looked a little eager to begin. Sure. Shizun said warmly as Naruto hopped of her lap and sat in front of her. Get in a meditative pose like I am doing, she said as Naruto watched and tried himself though Shizun had to help him a little since his legs were still so little. You comfortable? She asked and with Naruto nodding his head she began. Okay Naruto-chan first I want to make this hand sign. This is the ram hand sign. Using any one of the hand signs will help to bring out your chakra and bring it to the surface. The ram had sign is the one most used when starting out to first draw their chakra. Like this? He asked as did his best to mimic the hand sign Shizun was showing him. She observed and made a little tweak with two of his fingers before he had it right. Now to draw out your chakra you have to dig deep inside and try to draw it out. Search deep down and wait until you feel a warm sensation in your stomach. When you feel it, try to focus in on it and then pull it out to the surface. I will demonstrate, Naruto watched as Shizun closed her eyes taking a few deep breaths before exhaling. After about 10 seconds Naruto felt a strong burst of energy come from Shizun which caught him a little of guard. He could feel how warm it was and though it was anywhere near as big as his two sands or his ka-chan, but he felt it flowing smoothly form her. If he squinted a little he could just about make out a blue-like aura appearing around her. Was that chakra? He asked her when she stopped and opened her eyes. The blue thing around you? It was. If you manage surge out enough chakra then it can become visible around you and will be a light blue color. Now it is your turn, she asked as he nodded. Though don't be sad if you don't manage to do it Naruchan. It takes time to activate your chakra for the first time. Okay but I will try my best, he said eagerly as Shizun smiled at him and petted Tun Tun who was beside her. She watched as Naruto closed his eyes and took deep breaths similar to what she did moments ago. The ram hand sign he made was shaking a little but she knew it was because Naruto was a little nervous since he obviously did want to let her down. Up on the building the Anbu assigned to watch over Naruto also looked in interest, wanting to see if his Hokage's son would be able to activate his chakra for the first time. Though he leaned forward to get a better view, he still remained hidden from view. After a few minutes had passed, Naruto opened his eyes with sad look on his face. I couldn't find it, I did not feel that warm feeling in my tummy. That's okay Naruchan. I did say you might not be able to do it the first time around. It takes a few tries to first do it, you just have to keep trying and eventually it will happen. Okay I guess I can try again, he said as he got back in his meditative pose and made the ram hand sign again. He closed his eyes and took a few more deep breaths. Shizun observe again with Tun Tun staring at him too. I have to find a pull in my tummy, he thought as he searched around while keeping as calm as he could. After another minute he still could not feel it so he gritted his teeth a little. I need to unlock my chakra so I can protect Ka-chan, Tu-san, Mido-chan and Eiji-chan. I won't stop until I find it, he thought. Just when he finished his felt a pull in his stomach and felt a warm sensation appear there. Could this be my chakra he thought before doing as Shizun said and he did his focus on the worn sensation and to pull to it the surface. When he did it felt like his whole body suddenly became warm and felt his fingers and his toes tingle. Outside Shizun smiled a big smile when she saw a tiny blue aura appear around Naruto. She was about to go forward and hug him well done for activating his chakra for the first time, but was a little caught off guard when she felt the size of his chakra. His chakra, it's already about the size of fresh genin already. Is this because he is an Uzumaki? 
I know Kashina Sama had large chakra reservoirs when she was young, but I don't even she had this much when she first activated it. Though she also felt how untamed it felt. Once Naruto got used to activating his chakra, someone would most likely have to show him one of the basic chakra control exercises. Up on the building the Anbu was all a little surprised though his mask hid that surprise. Though he was not all that surprised considering whom his parents were. Shizun shook Naruto a little which made him lose focus and the chakra he was emitting stopped. He opened his eyes to see Shizun and Tun Tun looking at him with joyful looks on their face which made him smile a big smile. Wow, he said quietly to himself. Ba Chan is really strong. She is. She is one of the strongest in the village and is known all over the world as one of the strongest kunoichi there has ever been. So does that mean you are really powerful too? He asked making her laugh again. I am nowhere near as powerful as your Ba Chan but I like to think that I am capable of looking after myself. I am a Chunin level ninja so I know how to defend myself which is the main thing. Naruto just nodded and felt his eyes begin to get heavy. They appeared in front of his home and walked inside. He could hear female voices coming from the living room and recognized one as Kashina's. As Shizun walked towards the stairs she passed the living room where Kashina and the other's moms were. She was sat beside Makoto Uchiha and Inori Yamanaka while on another seat was Yoshino Nara and Sume Inazuka. All the mothers were holding little wrapped bundles in their arms while the twins were in a little crib just in front of Kashina. The mothers all looked up to see Shizun in the doorway holding Naruto in her arms looking like he will fall asleep at any moment. Hello Shizun, Kashina said standing up as the other's mom all said hello to the teenage girl. She looked at Naruto and saw him giving her a wave hello. Did you have fun today Naru-chan? She asked and saw him tiredly nod. He has been great today. He unlocked his chakra for the first time. Shizun said surprising the women in the room before they all smiled and told him well done. Thank you, he said almost half mumbling and not really paying much attention making the moms coo at him. Kashina went up to him and kissed him softly on the forehead while he nuzzled into Shizun. My little Naru-chan, already beginning his path to becoming a shinobi, I know your Tusan will be proud when he gets home. Little Naru-chan has gotten big since I last saw him, Makoto said as she appeared next to Kashina and gave Naruto a small wave. He is the same size as my little Itachi. They saw Naruto yawn and Kashina asked if Shizun could put Naruto to bed for her which the Shizun quickly said yes to. Walking up the stairs and entering his room she saw how neat and tidy it was and put him down onto his bed with blue covers with little shurikan on the front. She placed his book on the small desk beside the bed and quietly left the room leaving the door unlocked a little. Thank you for helping him today Shizun, Kashina said while Shizun just waved it off. I was happy to help him. I love spending time with little Naru-chan. In that case, might I ask you a favor? Kashina asked as Shizun nodded. With the twins, I might not have much time for Naruto and the same can be said with Minato with him helping rebuild the village. I was wondering, would it be possible for you to help Naru-chan with his chakra? Shizun was a little taken by surprise by the request but she could see where Kashina was coming from in a way. With two newborn babies, her focus would without a doubt have to be on them which would have left little time for Naruto. Plus Minato with his responsibilities as Hokage and the state the village was currently in meant the same thing towards Naruto. Of course Kashina-sama, I would love to help Naru-chan. Thank you Shizun. Kashina said before the two said their goodbyes and she walked back into the living room to continue her conversation with the other's mothers while Shizun left the house.